Hey guys, Monochrome here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Genuinely good to have you. Got something a little different, a little special for you guys this week. Now, I'm sure you've seen plenty of those restoration videos in which a guy shows off some sort of tool or knife that is absolutely caked with rust, just looks horrible, looks like it should be tossed into the scrap bin, and then they magically make them look practically brand new again, or close to it. They make them look usable, they make them look really good, and those types of videos are still popular on YouTube. Thing is, they used to be a lot more popular back before, well, back before folks started realizing, hey, those extreme tool or knife restoration videos are actually faked. Yep, sorry guys, those are faked. You can't take something that is genuinely covered in a absolute thick, horrendous layer of rust that's been there for a decade or two, and then you clean it off and it magically comes back to life. No, rust will actually eat metal. So after about a decade or two, a tool completely encrusted in rust, yeah, you're not bringing that back. Sorry, no. Those extreme restoration videos, as popular as they are, and even though they used to be more popular just a short time ago, no, those are fakes. What you're going to see for me is real. However, I'm not going to sit here with a brush, a Dremel, all that stuff, cleaning off tons of gunk off of these two knives. Um, this isn't a restoration video. This is basically an introduction to a realistic restoration video. I don't normally do this, but a while back, I was able to get my hands on a couple of old Schrade knives for really good prices. And I realized, oh, these need some tender, loving care, but not a lot of it. As you can see, these two knives are not caked on with massive amounts of rust. However, they have been used hard over the years, clearly, and they need some tender, loving care. This is a Schrade Uncle Henry, and I managed to pick it up for only 20 bucks. The lock, rock solid, it works. The lock is good. As you can see, the blade needs some help. Now, I don't plan on polishing up the blade as this is basically a user-grade knife. But the blade does need some attention, as you can see. And the tip, well, I mean, honestly, I don't know why, but my camera seems to be showing as though it has a decent tip on it. Um, not really. Yeah, um, there is a bit of a tip, but not really what this thing had back in the day. I think what happened was the original tip broke off at the very end, and then someone tried to sharpen it up a little bit to put a bit of a tip on there, and maybe they didn't exactly do the best job. 
So, yeah. So I'm going to try to restore that tip a bit better than what you're seeing here. Although on camera, it does look a little better than in real life. So that needs some attention. Clean up the blade a bit. Although I don't mind the scratches on the blade. Over here, this knife is a clone of the Buck Model 110, so you do have brass bolsters, and that's not rust. That's the thing about brass that really gives it an advantage. Brass does not rust, but it does tarnish, and sometimes quite badly. So I do have some brass polish I've already ordered. I'm going to use that. The uh, locking bar needs a little bit of attention, not too much. The biggest issue is what I can't see, and that's going to be on the inside. Yeah, there's probably tons of gunk in there. I do know how to fix that. Uh, basically, a large pack of Q-tips, a hammer to flatten the Q-tip heads, and... Um, nail polish remover with plenty of acetone in it. Just run each head down inside a couple of times and then use a different one. Otherwise, you're going to have a ton of uh, cotton buildup on the inside that you don't want. So, yeah, that's going to... That's going to need some attention and is probably going to be the most frustrating aspect of this. Now, as for the wooden handles, I'm guessing that can be treated also with acetone, but nail polish remover with acetone on genuine wooden handles, you have to be careful because it will dry out the moisture trapped inside the wooden handles and will sometimes cause the handles to crack. Yeah, any moisture trapped inside wooden handles, mm -hmm, that acetone will remove it and it could cause, could cause the wood handles to crack. That's something I learned through experience. But this is definitely a restoration project that is not going to require a ton of effort. I mean, this looks bad. And for those of you who are subscribed to my ASMR channel, you've already seen this guy used in a role play. But yeah, these things back in the day, working man's tools, solid, reliable, dependable, Yes, a copy of the Buck Model 110, but a genuine quality copy back when Schrade was still Schrade. So this is going to be one of the two knives I'll be restoring. There's not a ton of work involved, but it's going to be genuine restoration. And taking a look at the other one, for those of you who have seen my Schrade clip hanger video? Well, Schrade made them in more than one size. Now, that smaller Schrade clip hanger did not have a pocket carry clip. And this bigger version also does not have a pocket carry clip. However, it should. Now, here's the interesting thing. For those of you who used to have tactical one-handers back in the day, I'm talking early to mid, somewhat late 1990s, you know what I'm talking about. You'd get plastic or FRN handle scales with integral molded clips. That's right. The clips were not separate. Knife companies such as Spyderco, Cold Steel, Schrade, 
would make Zytel molded handle scales, and because it was easy to do so, they would make Zytel molded integral, part of the mold, clips. Now, as you can see, this clip broke off, and that was the biggest issue back in the day. I mean, whether it's a Cold Steel Voyager, Spyderco Delica, Spyderco Endura, or a larger Schrade clip hanger, these integral molded Zytel clips would snap off and break. And when they did, it's not as though you could unscrew the old clip, buy a new one, and replace it. Now, this charade is a bit misleading as it looks as though you can unscrew this portion of the broken clip. No, no. This is integral with the handle. This is molded as part of the handle. This screw is not for removing the clip. You can't remove the clip. And yeah, this used to be a big problem because, well, nowadays you're going to end up spending a small fortune if you want a Cold Steel Voyager, a Spyderco Delica, Spyderco Endura, genuine ones, even with Zytel molded handles. You're going to spend a small fortune, but even back in the day, early, mid, a little bit into the late 1990s. Yeah, I mean, those knives, they were reasonably priced, but still, they were more expensive than a traditional knife pattern. I mean, imagine spending right around 40 bucks for a Spider Co. Endura with an integral Zytel molded clip. You carried it around for a while and then the clip snapped and broke. Yeah, that's 40 bucks down the drain. And if you're a working class person, even back in the 1990s, 40 bucks was nothing to sneeze at. So now you were stuck with a horribly uncomfortable basically broken knife, technically a broken knife, because the clip was broken, there was no way to remove it, what do you do? Well, back then, as a younger man, I came up with a solution. There is a way to fix this, not completely. You cannot take this off and swap it out with a metal clip, that's not happening. But you don't have to bear down on a knife handle with a sharp, broken base of the clip. You don't have to. There is a solution. And I'm going to take care of it. There is a way to remove this thing. You can't replace the clip but you can remove it so that at least you can fully slip it into a pocket, use it, and yeah, basically take a small saw blade, preferably a fixed one, or if it is folding with a lock mechanism on it, you literally take your small saw and you saw this base off. That's right. Sew it off. Get a wood saw. Saw it off. And then take a wood file and then file down whatever is left after you take off the bigger chunk. And then to really make it comfortable, you finish up with rough grit sandpaper. Now here's the thing. Uh, your finished knife is going to look ugly as hell. It's going to look hideous, but you'll have a functional knife. So that's what I'm going to do on this one. 
And of course, I'm going to clean it up. This looks disgusting. This actually came as a set of three and credit to the seller. He did disclose the fact that the clip on this one was broken. Out of the three he sold me, he made it clear, hey, I'm not breaking these up. If you want this particular Schrade knife, you got to take the other two. And I did. I got the Schrade knife I wanted for a really good price. And basically, he threw in two more. Now, one of them is decent, but it was surprisingly dirty. That one I just cleaned off rather easily. Yeah, bit of moisture, um, rough paper towel, and that second one that I didn't want was good to go. The first one that I did want, perfectly good condition, didn't have to do anything to it. Then there's this one. This needs to be cleaned up. This stump of a clip needs to be removed. Yes, it is sharp and you don't want to bear down on it. Again, the inside needs to be cleaned. But from what I've seen so far, it's it's a lot cleaner on the inside than on the outside. I don't even know what that caked on crap is. But that can be cleaned rather easily with hot water and an old toothbrush. Just scrub, scrub, scrub. Get that taken care of. The blade isn't too bad, but there's a bit of uh, crustiness on it right there, which is the same thing I encountered on the second knife that came with this three knife set. So that's going to be easy to clean off. There's a bit of crap over there that should come off with a um, toothpick soaked in hot water. And yeah, I'm going to get this knife back to a decent shape. Back in the day, I had a Spyderco Endura where the clip snapped off. And yeah, small saw blade, wood file, and rough grit sandpaper. It took a while, but I got the job done. Unfortunately, that Endura, well, it had a fully serrated edge. And back then, I had no clue that you're not really supposed to try to sharpen a fully serrated edge. You're supposed to touch it up with a proper sharpening tool. I basically destroyed the edge, is what I'm saying, and I no longer have that knife. But when the clip snapped, I was able to restore it. Now, I also had a Cold Steel Voyager where the clip snapped, and the clip was quite a bit thinner than the one from Spyderco, but the Voyagers have such a wide base that there was absolutely no way I was able to save that one. Thankfully, the Spyderco Endura that I had and this Shrip, I'm sorry, and this Schrade clip hanger, they don't have a huge wide base, as you can see. So this knife can be saved, and this one can be restored. And we're talking pragmatic restoration. No fakery, no trickery, no BS. And I'm not going to do it on camera because I don't think you guys want to sit there watching me do all that restoration. So I'm making this video. This is the initial video. You guys can see the knives in front of you. You can see how bad they are. They're not too bad, but they both need to be restored. So you can see them in front of you now. 
and later on I'll make a follow-up video showing the end results. But, yeah, if I do anything different than what I mentioned in this video, I'll mention it in the next video. So think of this as part one of my two-knife restoration project. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please stay safe out there. Unfortunately, yes, it's still dangerous. Please take care.